Hi, I'm Meg. Welcome to Plant Fit Meg. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to dive right into mindful eating for healthy weight loss. So what does it mean to be a mindful eater and how do we use those concepts and ideas to help us along on our health and weight loss journeys? I'll share how I did that on my weight loss journey and what's been working for my clients as well. So before we can get into being mindful, we need to start with awareness. And being aware of our current habits and patterns without judgment as much as possible with kindness and compassion and without judgment. Just evaluating where we're starting from, what we're currently doing, what's working, what's not, and how we can make changes so that we are working towards our goals of healthy, sustainable, long-term, maintainable weight loss. An easy way to think about building awareness of eating habits and patterns is to think of the five W's and how. So the who, what, where, when, why, and how of your eating habits and eating patterns. These aren't necessarily steps to take in a particular order. I think of them more as a web or interconnected pieces. You could think of it as a puzzle as well, kind of putting the different pieces together and then getting a more full picture of how to lose the weight and take action and get going with towards your goals. So let's start with why. Why do I eat? Why does anyone in general, in society, in the world, eat? We eat for nourishment, we eat for energy, we eat to fuel our activities, to be able to do what we want to do, and eating enables us to survive and also thrive. But oftentimes, we don't eat just because we're hungry. There are many, many other reasons that we choose to eat food, and it's good to examine that and consider your own personal reasons why you may choose to eat, and in certain cases, why you overeat. Are you stressed out? Are you bored? Did you see a billboard or an advertisement or something that was very enticing to you? Was there some kind of trigger that you drive by on your way home or walk by when you're out and about? Why do you eat? This is a great place to start to start to build that awareness and sort of question why you're eating what you're eating and what other reasons might be coming up that you can address in a different way without using food as a coping mechanism or a tool to soothe emotions or boredom. I know for me, oftentimes I would just eat because it was there. There was food in front of me, so I just would eat without really thinking too much whether I was hungry or not. I just would eat because it tastes good right? <laughs> and occasionally that'll happen. But building this mindfulness around why you're eating is really, really important. It can be helpful to journal about it and maybe take some notes and reflect a little bit on why you're eating. And further to that, if there are reasons you're eating that are not hunger and nourishment and fuel and all that jazz, then you can consider what you can do to resolve these feelings of boredom or stress or whatever else is going on and come up with other strategies to address those concerns besides food. We often turn to food as our coping or our comfort. I know I did and I still fall into that from time to time. We're humans, we're not robots, we're not perfect, but building that awareness really helps. Sometimes we also make food choices just based on what we've done historically, and we don't even really consider why we do it. It's just something we've always done, and that's just why we do it. Maybe you eat a particular meal on a particular day of the week or something like that, and maybe it's time to reevaluate and consider other options and other alternatives and just be aware that you have the freedom to make a different choice if you want to. Next up is what am I eating? So what am I eating in terms of my overall sort of dietary pattern? And then more specifically, it might be helpful to keep a journal and just track what 
you're eating in a day, what you're eating in a week, just to sort of see what it looks like and just be truthful with yourself about what you're consuming and whether that looks like a good place to be to start with your health and weight loss goals or whether some little tweaks might be helpful to get you going and have you continue on the process to greater health and greater weight loss. It can be helpful to ask yourself, what am I eating now and what can I either add or reduce or eliminate in my dietary pattern that will be helpful to get me towards my goals. And it's not an all or nothing black and white situation. You don't need to completely eliminate any treats or completely eliminate any processed food or something like that. But it's just about managing and making a balance of what is reasonable, doable, makes sense, is appropriate based on your starting point and where you're coming from versus what will allow you to make progress and get you to where you want to go. And oftentimes the more changes that you make, the quicker your progress is, but that's not necessarily always a good thing. It can be good to take it a little bit of a slower and steady approach so that as you lose weight and as your calorie needs decrease, as your body gets smaller, you still have room to make tweaks and changes and shifts that aren't too challenging or too painful or difficult. Consider what you're eating and what that pattern overall looks like. Maybe you're someone who eats a really healthful diet throughout the week, and then on the weekend, it's a free-for-all, it's a party, woo! And you're just eating whatever and not being mindful of what's going in, and then that's impacting your ability to make progress. Maybe you're someone who eats quite healthfully during the day, but then evenings are tricky and you start dipping into more calorie dense, highly processed foods that might not be helpful. For the record, processed foods can be a part of a healthful diet. It's just about zooming out and looking at your overall dietary pattern and figuring out a way to make it so that you can include these things if you want to, but still make the progress you want to make as well and keep it healthy and keep it sustainable. Other tips for being mindful about what you're eating are food choices in terms of the grocery store, make a list before you go, and then once you get there, do your best to stick to your list. Another good thing to do is shop the perimeter of the shop rather than going through all of the aisles, unless you need something particular from an aisle. But oftentimes our eyes are drawn to brightly colored packaging or advertisements or something is on sale. And that can be great if it's a whole food, it's something helpful, or something that you're just going to eat occasionally, cool, but sometimes it can get a little bit tempting. And we do have decision fatigue. So the more times you say no to an item or no to particular things, you make a decision, say, no, I'm not gonna have that, I'm not gonna have that. The more times that you have to do that, the lower your ability is to continue to do that. And some people are better with this than others and kind of creating some boundaries for themselves that will allow them to maintain their health and get going or continue with their weight loss efforts. But it can be really challenging, especially in the beginning if you're changing up your diet and getting used to reading labels and things like that. So it can be helpful to just do the majority of your shopping in the perimeter of the shop, in the produce section, in the frozen foods, and getting into a few aisles where there are staple items like beans and whole grains and things like that. Another consideration with what you're eating is if you're going out for a meal, it can be helpful to look at the menu in advance if you can, 
or call the restaurant ahead of time if possible to check in and see what options might be available to you and maybe even make a decision in advance before you even get there so that it's just easier to make a helpful decision and go for it or to make a decision that's maybe not as ideally or optimally healthful, but you know that going into it, you're making a conscious choice, a mindful decision, and then you know you're going to get right back to your healthy plant-based eating as soon as you're home again and it's your next meal or next snack time. Who might sound like a bit of a weird one with this, but I can see this in two different ways. So one of them is sort of related to what I was saying about restaurant meals and things, potentially a little bit. Who are you consuming your meals with? Who are you socializing and eating meals, eating snacks with? What does their dietary pattern look like? Because sometimes that can have an influence on what you're eating as well. Not always, very much dependent on what the relationship is like and your personality, their personality, all that stuff. But sometimes friends and family can very innocently try to offer us foods that we're not interested in because they want us to join in on the fun or a little bit won't hurt or this or that. And sometimes that's completely true. But oftentimes when we're trying to lose weight and trying to get into a calorie deficit, it can be easier to sort of stick to our plan and not have those little bites and nibbles here and there because they do add up. So not to beat yourself up if things like that happen, that's okay, that's life. Paying attention to if there are certain people that you spend time with who maybe pressure you into eating a certain way. Maybe you have a friend that you spend time with who you always order pizza together, for example, or you always go to a particular restaurant or something like that. Maybe consider chatting with that friend about maybe doing a different activity, eating a different meal, cooking at home, going to a different place that has different options or doing a completely different activity if possible. So lots of different options there. The other who aspect is who are you? Who are you at your core? And I think as someone who is formerly in a larger body, I used to think I'm just a fat person. I'm a big girl and I'm somebody who will always be that way. And I eventually came to realize that that wasn't accurate. And I eventually, over time, redefined myself as someone who's not fat, someone who's not overweight, and someone who is very healthy, health conscious. And I'm not perfect. I'm not someone who always makes the optimal health decision. I'm not always sitting and eating greens and beans and rice and just living on that. Not that that would be perfect or optimal either. I don't think for the record that a perfect diet exists because everyone is so different. Our goals are different. We have different starting points and different sensitivities to foods and different preferences. So I don't think perfection exists at all. But I did redefine myself as someone who was healthy, someone who would make healthful choices more often than not, someone who is vegan, someone who eats a mostly whole food plant-based diet. And for the record, you can be overweight and be those things as well. Looking at somebody, you're not going to be able to tell their health outcomes just by looking at them. However, if you are looking to lose weight, an important piece of it is mindset and redefining the story you tell yourself about who you are as an individual. So if you're seeking weight loss and you're telling yourself that it's not possible because you're an overweight person, you're a fat person who's destined to always be that way, you need to try to come up with ways to practice telling yourself a new story, telling yourself a different 
version of events and accepting that you can be a different version of yourself. In a lot of ways, you will be the same, particularly if you're just on a weight loss journey and not a health and weight loss journey. For me, the two were very interconnected, and I know for some people that's not so much the case, but if you're seeking weight loss, practice noticing when you have those thoughts. I'll always be fat, or kind of the self-doubt that comes up that you can even do it, or that weight loss is even possible for you, and start to reframe that, question it, and Practice talking to yourself in a new way, perhaps talking to yourself as you would a loved one who is going through the same thing with encouragement, compassion, kindness, all that jazz. And it's a practice. It takes time. It's not like just flicking a light switch and, oh, I've made a decision to redefine myself and now it's all sunshine and rainbows. But continue practicing, continue to be kind to yourself in this process and you'll get to where you want to go. So another one is where. Where are you eating? Are you eating standing over your sink in the kitchen? Are you sitting at your kitchen table? Are you sitting on the couch and doing other things at the same time? So where? Where are you when you're eating? Are you at a friend's house? Are you out and about on the go? Are you in the car? Where are you at work? So consider where you are when you eat and what your dietary patterns look like in those different places. (laughs) Think about what you eat when you are in different locations because sometimes it can vary a lot depending on where you are. If you're in a restaurant, for example, or if you're at a friend's place, for example, or if you're sitting on the couch versus sitting at the kitchen table, what does it look like? And how does that impact your eating habits and how mindful and conscious you are of what you're eating and how you're eating? The other thing with where is where are you shopping for your foods? So do you buy most of your foods at a grocery store? Do you end up in convenience stores or fast food places? Where, where are you? Next up is when. When do you eat? Do you have a particular pattern of how frequently you're eating meals and when you eat? Do you have a very specific sort of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks in between, maybe dessert after? Do you eat three meals a day? Do you eat, you know, six times a day? What does that look like? So how often are you eating typically? Are you eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full? Or are you overeating? Are you eating when you're not hungry? And this is related to why you eat, but do you eat when you're having a stressful moment at work or something comes up? Do you turn to food for comfort? You can absolutely lose weight eating three meals a day. You can absolutely lose weight eating six times a day. I think it's very much personal preference and based on what your lifestyle looks like. And, you know, if you're someone who works from home, for example, you might have more flexibility to be making meals at home or taking a little bit more time for prep or eating meals. Whereas if you're in an office setting or you're eating and you have a limited time for a break, you might have a shorter window to get the food in and you won't have time for prep and things like that in the moment. So consider what will work best to fuel you for your activities so that you have enough fuel in the tank, you're feeling full and satisfied and you're ready to take on your day. And it's a pattern that works for you. In the past, I had been told to eat six times a day. And as I was especially starting my weight loss journey, that just didn't work for me. I liked to have three large meals, a snack here and there if I needed it, and something sweet at the end of the night. 
So it just depends on what works well for you, but paying attention to what you're eating and why you're eating and then putting the pieces of the puzzle together with when and the frequency of your meals and snacks. Some people like to be very regimented with their meals and have specific meal times and it's very structured. And other people prefer more of a eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, and really following a more intuitive course of hunger cues and fullness cues. And I think a little bit of both can be really, really helpful. And just running a bit of an experiment on yourself and testing it out to see what works best for you, what feels good, what is comfortable, and what makes sense for you with your lifestyle. Continuing on is how. How are you eating? Are you just shoveling it in and not paying attention? And are you eating in a really distracted way where you're watching TV or your focus is elsewhere? You're working at the same time. Are you having a meal where you're at the kitchen table? At the kitchen table. And you're very focused on what you're eating and chewing and enjoying and savoring. And I know that that's not always possible. We are very busy and we have other priorities and other things to do, but it can be very, very helpful to slow down a little bit with how we're eating so that our bodies actually have an opportunity to feel full and to recognize that we're eating and that we've eaten a meal and that we're feeling nourished and ready to move on with our day. Sometimes if we're not paying attention, it can almost be like that feeling when you hop into your car early in the morning and you drive to work and then you don't even remember the drive there. <laughs> you can have the same thing with your plate where you're just sort of mindlessly eating and you go to take another bite and there's nothing left on the plate. Whoa. <laughs> so paying more attention to how you're eating, the speed at which you're eating, how distracted or how focused and mindful you're being can be helpful. Also how you're even serving your plate. So I used to do a more of a buffet style where I would put all of the dishes of the variety of foods on our kitchen table and then we would serve ourselves from there and then continue to serve ourselves more or pick at it or whatever as we went through the meal. And I found it really, really helpful to move that or keep that in the kitchen, serve my plate in whatever portion I wanted in terms of my goals, which was often whatever leafy greens I wanted, as much as much of that as I wanted, and then half the plate of vegetables and or fruit, and then a quarter whole grains and a quarter of a higher protein source like beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh, seitan, all of those kinds of things. And then bringing my plate to the table, eating that whole plate, and then sitting for a moment and evaluating whether I was actually still hungry. Sometimes food is just so palatable, tastes so good, and I don't know about you, but I love eating. So sometimes it just tastes so good that you want more, but you're really not hungry for it. And occasionally doing that is fine, not a huge deal. But if you make a habit of doing that at every meal or every dinner time, those calories are going to add up. So really honing into whether you're actually hungry and whether you actually need more fuel in the tank can be really helpful and that's just one easy way to do it. So as I said in the beginning, it's about building awareness of your current habits and awareness of 
where you want to go and what changes you want to make, what little tweaks to your habits and behaviors and actions do you want to take to really set yourself up for success and put you in a situation where you are maintaining or elevating your health and you're also managing to lose weight and get towards your weight loss goals as well. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Be sure to follow me on social media. I'll leave my links below. I'll also leave some other helpful weight loss videos and my weight loss playlist at the end here so you can check that out. Thanks so much for watching today's video and particularly for watching through until the end. You're awesome. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!